What if you have s squared is equal to 4s plus 32? Again, you look at this first and you say, well, I'm going to solve for s, but then you realize you have an s squared and a 4s, so no matter how you manipulate it, you're never going to be able to combine those terms. So the strategy will be to move everything to one side, factor it, set it equal to zero. So let's move the 4s and the 32 over here by subtraction. So it'll be s squared minus 4s minus 32 equals what? Zero, because we subtracted 4s from both sides making it negative here, and 0 on this side, and we subtracted 32 from both sides, doing the same thing. So now we have this equal to 0. We attempt to factor. So we have, we open our parentheses up, and we're setting it equal to 0. So we have an s and an s, because s times s is x squared, or s squared. And then we have 32, so we need to think of things that multiply to give us 32. You could do 16 times 2 is 32. That's not really going to work. 8 times 4 is 32. Let's try that. The reason is because you're going for 8 times 4, and you also want an interior term, which is going to be a negative 4. So you have to choose your signs appropriately, and we did all of this stuff in learning how to factor. We're going to need to choose our signs as follows. This is going to be a negative 8, and this is going to be a positive 4. And the reason is because you need different signs, because negative 8 times 4 is negative 32, but then the interior term will be negative 8s. This will be positive 4s. You add those, you're going to get the negative 4s. If any of that is confusing, go back to the factoring lessons because I go into great detail with tons of examples. You have to master that in order to do this topic. All right, so then the next step is you set each of these equal to 0. S plus 4 is equal to 0, and you just solve them. Very simple equations. S will be equal to positive 8, and S will be equal to negative 4 just by doing uh, adding the opposite, basically, and moving it over there. So you have, again, two answers the 8 and the negative 4, valid solutions to this because the highest power in the equation was an s squared. So you should expect two answers there. Now, I want to take a, a little break before we go on to the next problem and do an aside. Okay, Let me give you a very similar problem and show you what a lot of students get into trouble doing. What if you have s squared minus 4s and set it equal to 32? Okay. A lot of students look at that and they're like, ooh, I know how to solve that. They say, okay, I have an s squared and an s, so I'm going to pull out an s here. I'm going to make this s minus 4. So far, that's factoring is correct. And I'm going to set that equal to 32. So far, this is all correct. And then what they will do is they will take each term, like this one and this one, and they'll set it equal to what's on the right-hand side because what we've been doing here is setting this equal to 0 and setting this equal to 0. So it makes sense we can set this equal to this and this equal to this, right? So what you'll get is s is equal to 32, and you'll get s minus 4 is equal to 32. And when you move that 4 over, you're going to get s is equal to 36. So they'll, they'll circle these answers and say, I have two answers, 32 and 36. But if you take these answers and you stick them back in here, neither one of them work. Why? What was the problem? Okay, so before you get too crazy about looking at what I've done, I'm going to draw a big X through here and say, no, you don't do this. The critical problem that you made, the, the mistake that I made here on purpose to show you, was once you get to this step, you can't set these guys to the right-hand side unless the right-hand side is zero. So if this is 32 or 16 or negative 4 or negative 10, you, you can't set these terms equal to the right-hand side unless it's equal to 0. Because the only reason it works over here is because setting this equal to 0 means that 0 times anything gives me 0. Setting this equal to 0 means that anything times this 0 is going to satisfy the equation and give me 0. So it's a special case where we can do that because forcing either one of these terms to go to 0 will set the, send the whole left side equal to 0, so it works. If I set this equal to 32, you can clearly see that if I put 32 in here, and then 32 minus 4, and I multiply by the 32, there's no way it's going to work. So the bottom line is, whether or not you understand the reasons why, never ever do this unless the right-hand side is equal to 0. You move that 32 over, then you factor, then you set it equal to 0 like this. You do not set things equal to 0, these terms, I'm sorry, you do not set these terms equal to the right-hand side when you have a non-zero right-hand side. All right? All right, just want to make sure you understood that. What if we have y squared is equal to 16y? So the strategy here is you move everything to one side, you factor. So we have y squared minus 16y equals what? Zero, because we subtracted it from both sides. Now the common term is y that I can pull out. So I have a y. Here I'll just have a single y left over minus 16. Again, equal to zero. 
So because I have a factored form on the left, and because I have it equal to zero, I can set this term, y, is equal to zero, and I can set y minus 16 is equal to zero, and then when I solve that, I'll get y is equal to positive 16 by adding. So I have two answers. Again, the reason the answers work is because when I stick them in here, this zero times no matter what I get here makes it equal to zero. This 16 minus 16 gives me zero no matter what I have over here, forces it to go to zero. That's why the solution technique works. All right, so let's go ahead and do a couple of additional problems and call it a day. Let's say we have 6 times n squared plus n equals 2. I can't really add these terms to the left. I can't combine them and isolate them, so I know I'm going to have to try to factor. Don't fall into the trap of factoring this and setting it equal to 2. Remember, we just said don't do that. Move the 2 over first and then factor. 6n squared plus n minus 2 equals 0. I subtracted 2 from both sides. And then you factor. You open up your parentheses and you're setting everything equal to 0. And what you have is, there's a lot of choices. 6n squared. Right? You can do 6 times 1, you can do 2 times 3, you can do 3 times 2. You have to try a few different things. In this case, let's do 3n here and 2n right here. Because when you multiply these together, it'll give you 6n squared. squared. Now, the 2 is actually pretty easy. The only things that multiply together to give you 2 is 1 times 2, or 2 times 1. So we'll put a 2 here and we'll put a 1 here. And then you try to play with the signs and figure out if you can make it work, right? So you need to have this be a negative 2. So one of these will be a positive, one of them will be a negative, and I need this interior term to be a positive. So you, again, go through the factoring lesson. You have to try different combinations, but ultimately if you land on a plus here and a minus here, it works because 2 times negative 1 gives me this. Of course, this times this gives me this. The inside term is 4n. The outside term is negative 3n. When you add them together, you get a positive 1n. So this factored form works. Then you can set the 3n plus 2 equal to 0, and you can also set the 2n minus 1 equals 0. Right? Then you move the 2 over here, so 3n is equal to negative 2, and then you divide by 3 here right, to get the n by itself, so n is equal to negative 2 thirds. That's the left-hand solution. And then over here, you have 2 n. You move the 1 over by addition, making it positive 1. And then now I can divide by this 2 here. So I'll have n is equal to 1 half. And that's that answer. So I have two answers. Again, I expect that because I have an n squared here. I should have two solutions, negative 2 thirds and positive 1 half. I'll leave it as an exercise to you. But if you stick it in here, you'll see that it works. In fact, it's actually easier to see if you take this 1 half and put it here, What's going to happen? 2 times 1 half is just 1. 1 minus 1 gives you 0, so it forces this to 0, which forces the whole thing to 0 uh, there. All right, we have one last problem in this section, and it's going to be 7x squared is equal to 18x minus 11. And we want to solve it. Again, we want to move everything to one side, so we'll have 7x squared minus 18x plus 11 equals 0. All we did was move the 18 over here by subtraction, making it negative 18x. Move the 11 over here by addition, making it positive 11. Now we attempt to factor. And sometimes you cannot factor these things, you know, but you're going to try. So the first term is 7x squared. The only thing that multiplies to give you 7 is going to be 7 times 1. So I have a 7x there and a just a 1x. When you multiply these together, you get 7x squared. And again, 11 is pretty easy. The only thing multiplied together that gives you 11 is 1 times 11, but I have to arrange it properly. So the way it's going to work is you put the 11 here and the 1 here. And you want a negative interior term, so the only way it's really going to work if you go back to the factoring lessons is a negative and a negative. Double check your work. Posit a negative 11 times negative 1 gives you positive 11. Inside term is going to be negative 11x. Outside term is negative 7x. You add them together, you get the negative 18x. Notice that if you accidentally put the 11 over here, you know, if you didn't put it here, you put it here, it wouldn't work because you'd have 11 times 7, giving you 77. There's no way you're going to get 18 out of that. So you have to go back to the factoring lesson and realize that there's different combinations of places in which you can put these things, but only one of them actually works. So you continue on and set everything or each term equal to 0 like this. Now this right-hand side one's very easy. You move the 1 over, giving you x is equal to 1. 
And then here you have 7x is equal to positive 11. And then to get the answer, you just divide by 7. 11 over 7. So you have two answers, 11 over 7 and positive 1. Again, you expect two answers because the highest power in the equation that you have is a power of 2. All right? And that's, that's what you get. You can stick these in there and verify for yourself. In fact, you can see if you put 1 here, you're going to get 0. That's what forces it. You put the fraction in here, this is going to force that to 0, and you're going to get the same thing. That's all for this lesson. I have one more lesson on solving equations uh, using factoring to give you a little more practice. But beyond that, we'll be done. So make sure that you can solve these equations. Make sure you can do them all yourself. Then follow me on to the next lesson to get more practice. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.